Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome to episode number three of the Main Games Show. And today is our first interview with someone other than myself and Zoe. So let's welcome Isaac onto the podcast. Isaac, how are you? Good, thank you for having me. Get nice and close to the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so Isaac is a senior here at, you're a senior, right? Yeah, yeah, at Yarmouth yeah. High School and three sports, cross country, indoor, and outdoor. Yeah. Of those three sports, which is your favorite? Personally, cross country for me, um, I'm a distance runner, so the longer the distance, the better. And then cross country, it's a 5K for everybody. Um, and don't get me wrong, I love the track, but f- uh, running through the woods for cross country is definitely my favorite. Since you like distance, I'm assuming you do the distance events in track. Yes. Yeah. What What's the high? Like, what races do you do? Do you met like? Do you do the like four by four like with the teams, or are you just like a solo? I'm um, running the mile. Yeah. So um, my specialty is the two mile, um, but I also run the mile and the 800 as well as the four by eight. Um, so, I mean, the, I'm not, I, I mean, just because of my size and things like that, like going fast, like running a four minute mile just really isn't like running at that pace. Isn't really something that I'm great at doing. Gotcha. Um, so a lot of the guys, um, I mean, obviously I fill in for the four by 18, but, um, definitely more of those individual events are more my speed. Very cool. What's your fastest two mile? Um, my fastest two mile was actually on the track after cross country. Um, and I actually, inside of a 5k, I split an 1110. Um, so hold on. I gotta do some, I mean, that's 11 is like 535. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I didn't run my first mile until I was 16. So, um, I, I, like I ran my first mile. It was, I remember the number. I remember the beep on my watch. It was a 1247. Um, so, I mean, anybody can really run, and I mean, that's the great thing about this sport is that, like, you come from anywhere, um, and that's a great thing about training in general is that you don't have to be at it your whole life. You can pick it up, um, and it can really transform your life like it transformed mine. Is that when you started sports, when you were 16, you said? So, I started playing sport. I mean, I've played sports um, for my whole life, whether it's, I mean, t-ball or I never actually got into soccer. Some people find that shocking coming from Yarmouth. Especially in Yarmouth. Yes. We are a soccer town. Yep. Um, I played football in middle school. I've done Nordic skiing. Um, I swam for three years in high school. Um, I've really kind of run the gambit of what we have to offer. Um, but for much of my life, I was actually really, really overweight. Um, and going into COVID, I topped out at like 310 pounds, which I mean, I'm 6'2", so like, but I mean, I was like very, very obese um, and like it was threatening my heart um, and like my life expectancy. Um, and I just took the time of COVID and kind of transformed my habits in a slow way. Um, and I credit running for saving my life, um, but also just kind of returning me back to who I was when I was that younger kid and my weight didn't nag at me. Um, like it did for the majority of middle school and the start of high school. That's intense, man. What, like, did you know or feel, like, as you were getting overweight? And, like, did you know what was happening? Or it was one of those days where, like, you kind of looked at yourself and you're like, I'm overweight? It was definitely, like, I knew it was happening. Um, but I was just like, oh, I, like, eat healthy. Um, and my diet wasn't bad. It's not like I was pounding Hostess brownies and, like, sitting on the couch eating potato chips. Like, I was still active, but I was just eating so much that it, I mean, it didn't matter um, at the end of the day. And eventually I got hit um, the February break, actually, right after swimming states. My coach is like, he didn't want me skiing because he's like, you're going to get injured, you're going to get injured. And then, oh, wow. th- like, literally three days after the season ended, I got hit by a drunk skier and fractured my left humerus. Um, so I was in a sling for four months, and that was February of 2020. So then March, I mean, just right, it was the shutdown, later, yeah. Everything shut down, and we all had time on our hands. And I just looked one day in the mirror, and I'm just like, I. I don't have my independence right now with this arm and if my weight gets out of control anymore then I'm going to lose it period and I just I couldn't do that for myself so once you came to that kind of realization what were like your first steps like what did you do to start changing those habits because it can be it's extremely hard 
to reverse those habits once we start getting into any habit that we have. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I actually, I just, I, I started literally just walking cause that's all I could do. I mean, I couldn't run, I couldn't work out with my arm. Um, and I just really started to enjoy it. I mean, I was up, I was moving for an hour a day. I was outside and I just started feeling better and it wasn't, I mean, I started changing, um, like what I was eating, how much I was eating. Um, I credit intermittent fasting. Um, for those who don't know, it's just a cycle of where you don't eat for a certain period of time. So I would just push my breakfast in a little bit and push my dinner in a little bit. And I would run an eight hour eating window and a 16 hour fast. Um, and just small tweaks like that. I'm not saying you have to do any or all of that. Um, but as I got to heal my arm back, I started doing PT exercises for that. And then just started working out. Um, I mean, just home. I mean, we were all at home. We didn't have access to gym. So it was, you know, free weights. And then, um, my lacrosse coach actually sent out this little like sheet of like, you can go on a run and it'll earn you points or you can do push ups and it'll earn you points. And I'm like, I gotta have the most points I, at, at heart. I'm a very competitive person. Um, and I would just, I mean, those mile runs were the most painful thing I ever did. Um, and it took me three weeks to run a mile. It did. I mean, I would take walking three times for a little bit as a big win. Um, and I didn't enjoy it to start. I mean, often when I would step my foot off the driveway, all I would want to do is turn around and go back in. But um, it was, I'm glad for myself um, and for my overall health. Um, and I'm just a better person for it. Um, and I mean, truly like finding training um, and finding this community of running has really, really transformed my life in a positive way. Is this around, like, d after you kind of made this realization, you started walking and doing these things to get fit, is this when you kind of found BPN and Nick Mayer? So, for those of you who don't know, I'm a BPN, Bear Performance Nutrition Ambassador, and so Isaac and I relate to this, that we both kind of look up to and follow Nick Bear and his uh, mindset. So, is that, like, something that really played into, like, how you kind of we're able to keep going. Absolutely. No, I credit Nick Bear um, and people like that who really just like they, they I, his philosophy of go one more that was last year's. But I mean, it's been his slogan for a long time of sometimes when I would just be nearing the end of that hard workout. And I'm just like, how about I just ditch this last set? I mean, it's that mental mindset of just committing to improve yourself and to prove to yourself that you can um, and that we're all capable of a lot more than we think we are. Um, and definitely that go one more and that drive his videos that he would put out um, BPN's mission of just spreading the positive benefits of training um, and exercise to everybody. Um, and absolutely, I credit BPN um, and Nick Bear and his go one more philosophy with part of what's gotten me here today. That's very cool. So you COVID happens, you top around 300. How long did it take for you to get to your current weight now? So I actually, um, it, I, so over the next, I would say tw eight to t 12 months, um, I got down to like a reasonable weight of like probably around like 200, which for me, like I'm, I'm just like a big guy. I'm six, two. It's a re I, yeah, that's yeah, it's normal. A yeah. Weight. Um, but then, um, it just, it got to a point where it was almost an obsession. Um, and I just, I did fall into those disordered eating habits. Mm -hmm. Um, and I really, really bottomed out last winter. Um, I just, I wasn't happy. I felt really isolated and exercise was just that escape. So I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. Um, and it got to be just so much where it, I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it, it just felt like such a grind. Um, and I got down to, I think 140 pounds. Oh, wow, yeah, man. Like, like really, really underweight. Um, and I credit actually Dave Cox, the coach of Yarmouth Swimming, um, who at the end of the season, uh, he works in the, or he used to work in the hospital. Um, and he made some connections for me and started to get me help. Um, and I'm eternally grateful for what he did and what my parents did to help me out. Um, but also Sarah Kerrigan, our, our track and field coach and also our cross country coach for opening that door. Um, I actually made the tough choice to 
walk away from our um, starting, go starting goalie position of our lacrosse team. Um, we were reigning state champs, um, and just for personal reasons, I just felt like I really needed a supportive and inviting culture. Um, and it's not that our lacrosse team isn't that, but I just, I really, Mrs. Kerrigan and that whole team opened their arms, so I'm really, really grateful for, to that track community. Um, and it's part of the reason that I'm so invested in it today. So it was kind of that like perfect storm of overtraining, underfueling. Did someone have to kind of like shake you and be like, Isaac, you've took it, taken it too far? Or again, was it you having the awareness to be like, I'm in a hole and I need to get out before it gets like even worse? I, I knew I was in a hole, but I was just in denial, absolutely. Um, and absolutely, I credit my coach, Dave Cox, with really like shaking me. Um, I actually got called into the AD office, and he was just like, your resting pulse is like 32. Um, and I mean, I could I could stand up and like be at like a resting pulse at like 25, and I would think that was normal. And now, I mean, yes, I was running a lot, and I was training a lot, so I was going to have a low pulse, but like 25 is like you're not and it's dangerous yeah, exactly um and i absolutely credit him with helping me out um and getting me the resources that i need to recover so you just swung from one pendulum to the other what were some of the steps that you took to kind of regain control and like ownership of your health and your fitness um Definitely, it, it became, I mean, it got to a point where when it, was, it was an obsession for other people. Like, I just got so obsessed with looking a certain way and having a certain physique. Um, and I just, I had to stop and reflect and go back to that freshman self pre-COVID of like, look at how far you've come and why did you start this journey? You started this journey for yourself and not for other people. Um, and I just had to reflect and it was like, this training and this running, you did it because it made you feel good and you need to get that back. So it was finding, I mean, it was refining that balance between my social life, my family, um, my life, but then keeping training. Um, but a big part of that was just ensuring that you were fueling correctly. Um, and I worked with a nutritionist to really help me out um, because, I mean, track and running is a demanding sport. It's a sport that unfortunately has been plagued by a lot of disordered eating. Um, and it just, I mean, a lot of people who, I mean, when you're smaller, it's a little easier to run faster, but you don't have to be smaller to run fast is kind of what I had to realize. Um, and I really just had to kind of come back to center and stop training for a month and a half or two months and just really reflect and then gradually ease back into it um, with um, track and also summer training for cross country. So do you still have issues or surrounding food and nutrition and training or have like, because that was last winter, so it's been a year now. So can you say that you're like, obviously you're on the up, right? But yeah. like, how much on the up are you? Absolutely. I mean, it's not, um, it's something that I really didn't talk about last, I mean, absolutely not last winter or last spring, but um, this fall there in cross country, I really just gained some confidence to bring some awareness to this issue because I feel like it doesn't really get talked about. Um, and I mean, I'd be lying if, I mean, like we all, we all have hard days and I mean, I have hard days with food, obviously, where I get that um, that itch to train because of because I feel guilty or whatever it is. But I mean, I I would say maybe once a month. The I mean, it like when I mean this fall and all that has been really stressful. So I've actually kind of been surprised about how much I've been able to kind of just focus on other things and not let it control my life. Um, but absolutely, because of the help and the support that I've received from um, professionals, but also my community, my friends, um, I'm definitely, definitely on um, the road to a healthy recovery. When you first started talking about this, like, was it embarrassing? Did you feel like shame or just kind of obviously it's an uncomfortable topic that not everyone talks about especially with males being like with disordered eating it's usually the female target so like how was that when you first started to actually talk to people about it I mean absolutely like you said it's scary it's scary to open up and be like yeah I have like I had this issue I feel like there's this false assumption in our society that it's a choice um and I sometimes like yeah, like part of it, yes, we all 
we all make choices like I made a choice to overtrain but sometimes you just get in the cycle where you just need someone to reach out and tap you and be like I want to help you um, and it's just about making a supportive environment where it's okay to talk about these things so if people are feeling like they're falling into that loop that they don't have to hide it like I, I started to fall in the loop and I just I just kept going because it's, I did I felt uncomfortable talking about it um, and I just felt like maybe if someone had tapped me earlier I could have avoided it and that's really what kind of made me want to come out and talk about it because if I can save somebody from going through that experience I by sharing mine I absolutely want to do it and I think I just think like right there like that's where the money is because it's just like if the more we talk about it the more I wouldn't say normal it becomes but the more normal it becomes to talk about it because everyone kind of I don't want to say everyone experiences it but like in my experience a lot of people experience just like body image issues or like issues with food and like I've talked briefly about it like I used to have like disordered eating and would kind of like binge eat and <laughs> work at an ice cream shop that was bad <laughs> that was bad <laughs> but um like it's I'm sure everyone can relate to eating something or eating too much especially now that we're after the holidays and feeling guilty and then kind of getting into that cycle of like I need to work out because I ate this food rather than like I need to eat and work out to fuel like to feel better or if you're playing a sport to fuel that sport exactly and I feel like I, I feel like so much of, like what you talked about of that body image is unfortunately pushed by social media and things like that I mean when you talk when you think about New Year's resolutions like so much of it is getting healthier but people are like oh I want to lose like 50 pounds and like yeah you want to lose 50 pounds but like ask yourself why you're going to the gym I mean, make that choice for you and make that choice to train to make you feel better than to do it for anybody else. Absolutely. Um, and that's really why I started this whole thing is because I wanted to make myself feel better. Um, and at the end of the day, like coming, kind of swing that pendulum and coming back, I'm training now because it's what I love to do. Um, I was just on a base run and I was talking with one of my teammates and I'm like, we are so darn lucky that we get to put our feet on the floor every morning and then we get to come to this great high school and we get to train with our friends. Um, and not everybody has the opportunity to do that. And it's just important to sometimes step back and recognize how grateful we are to have the ability to train people um, that make us feel great. You nailed that because we have a very privileged <laughs> place here at Yarmouth High School. It's very, um, it's a nice spot. Uh, speaking of training, do you have any current training goals that you are going for? Like, what does your training look like? What does your nutrition look like, especially coming back from this and dealing with this? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I definitely am going into this winter um, wanting to increase my strength and definitely my explosiveness um, while maintaining and growing my um, anaerobic capacity. Um, I really, really want to run a sub 11 two mile and outdoor um, track. Um, and I'm really hoping to just um, I mean, after that track season ends, I'm hoping to run the main marathon next fall. Oh, nice, um, man. So I, I have a little bit of time for training for that. I'll probably start that in June or so. Um, but I've run a couple half, I've probably run eight half marathons or so. That's a lot. Yeah. I, it, again, with outdoor, um, it was unfortunately not a whole lot of them. I would say I've run too healthy. Yeah. Um, uh, half marathons. I used to just, I mean, I was part of that overtraining. Um, but it just, it really, really feels good just to be out for almost like, I mean, for me, it's, I mean, for almost two hours just running in beautiful days in Maine. Um, and it's just hard to beat. So definitely, um, working on my speed, working on my strength, and then obviously coming back and running the main marathon next. I don't know, man. I ran one half marathon, and it was one of the most miserable things <laughs> I've ever done. And I don't think I – I'm not going to say I won't ever do one again, but at this point in time, I do not want to hey, do one again. It's not for everybody, and I respect that. I have a lot of friends who are like, I don't know how you run. And I used to be that person. I used to hate it. But for me, like a lot of people, it's like lifting weights, and I absolutely get that rush from lifting as well, and that's why I love doing both. Um, but just the freedom of – especially in summer on those bright, sunny days – of just being able to, I mean, you need sneakers in 30 minutes, and I can just go out and my whole day has changed. There is some, like, euphoria that comes Absolutely. from, like, a nice run. Like, when you, like, people talk about the runner's high. You don't hit it very often, but when you do, really it nice. feels really nice. It feels really nice. So, 
talk like I'm sure you get asked this all the time, but it's just like you're gonna graduate. Yeah. What are your plans after college? After college, wow. Um, I am... or sorry, not after college. I jumped four years okay. after after high school. After sorry. High school. <laughs> yeah. Um. So I am planning to pursue. Um, a degree in college. I don't quite know yet where. It's still up in the air, um, but probably a double major in business and international relations, and I'll probably to fulfill my pre-law requirements. Oh, wow. Um, and then I'll likely either go to law school or go on to get my MBA. Um, and I really um, just want to go out and do good in this world. I want to work for a corporation or a firm that represents good people and good values um, and really just try to go out and spread a message of positivity. I feel like, uh, unfortunately, our world has kind of fallen into a bit of a negative cycle and the polarization um, on just critical issues. Um, and I just feel like it's our generation's job to really go out and bring the world back and unite everybody again. And I, I mean, I know I'm one person saying this and it sounds overarching, but it's really, um, I just, I, I feel like it, you might as well shoot for the stars. And if you come up short, at least you can say you try. I don't think that's overarching at all. And I think that especially kids your age don't dream big enough. I, di I didn't dream big enough. Or at least I didn't believe in the dreams that I was dreaming. So when, if you believe in it, like you can really make a lot of things happen when you actually like believe in yourself. Are any sports going to be in your future? Like, organized or club or in like yeah absolutely um definitely I, I i don't think i'm quite i'm looking at a lot of bigger schools so cut times for track are not in the cards for me mm -hmm. um personally but absolutely continuing um with club cross club running um swimming you know we might throw some skiing in there uh depending on where i end up but absolutely keeping sports and training is an important part of my um life most definitely well, that's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you, Isaac, coming on to the show. It takes a lot of vulnerability and an immense amount of bravery and courage to talk about the things that you've been through. And so I appreciate it. I'm sure everyone listening and watching is going to appreciate it as well. Thank you very much for having me on, Jenny. It was a pleasure. That being said, we will talk to you guys in the next episode.